This is the Action Movie Guys Podcast. Bringing you action movie reviews from across the decades. Plus box office numbers and insight like never before. And now your hosts of the Action Movie Guys Podcast, Alex and Nate. What's up, everyone? Welcome to episode number 104 of the Action Movie Guys podcast. I'm your host, Nate. This is my co-host, Alex Figueroa. And we are kicking off our Arnold Schwarzenegger month. Now, Alex, I'm going to be honest with you. I'm very surprised it took us this long to do an Arnold month because he is maybe the biggest like action star of all time. I mean, everyone knows Arnold Schwarzenegger. I agree with you. Our whole <laughs> podcast was built on... Arnold and Stallone, but we did heaviest. Stallone. We did a million Stallone movies and no Arnold movies except like the Terminator franchise. That yeah. was it. So lucky for you guys, we already covered that. So these will be all non-franchise Arnold movies. And there was a lot to choose from. You guys voted for these five. And we're kicking it off with Kindergarten Cop. And I, you know what? This is a 90s, 1990. And we got a good mix here. We got some 90s. We got some 80s. We got a 2000s one, I believe. So we're going to have a lot of fun talking some Arnold. I do prefer Arnold. Arnold to Stallone. I know Alex is a Stallone over Arnold guy. I'm the opposite. So this should be good because we, we covered 942 Stallone movies. Now we're getting to some Arnold movies. Now, Alex, when's the last time you saw Kindergarten Cop? I'm going to tell you the truth, bro. I did not remember this movie. Uh, 1990. It's not 90s, but it was got to be around the 98-ish, okay. like 11 years from now or something like that. Because honestly, when we wa- when we put this on, me and my wife was like, yo, I don't remember the scene. Like, it was just one of those. <laughs> I'll be honest. I didn't remember the first, like, 20 minutes. I was yeah. like, I don't remember any of this. I only remember him at the school. <laughs> Dude, to it. Be, it was crazy because when he came in with the beard, right? Yeah. I was like, did I put in the wrong movie? <laughs> <laughs> this end of days? What am I? Yeah. What, am I what am I looking at? Collateral right damage? Like, yeah, I, what, what did I do wrong? No, yeah. but yeah, I agree with you. I haven't seen this movie in ages. It's been a while since I've seen it. Not as much as you. I saw this a few years ago at, when I bought it when it came out on Blu-ray. So I popped it in. And I was like, oh man, kindergarten. I I watched this a lot when I was younger. Not a lot, a lot, but a good amount in the '90s. So uh, I'm familiar with it, except the first 20 minutes. Apparently, now yeah. before we do that, you you already know the deal. We got to give you some box office numbers. Now this was post. 80s, big time movies, but this was pre-Terminator 2 on its Schwarzenegger. It was 1990, directed by Ivan Reitman. Alex, how did this do as far as box office? You know what, man? This did great. And you ready for this? Here <laughs> oh, we I'm go. excited. Yeah, yeah here you go. Kindergarten Cop 1990. Another hit for Ivan Reitman. Went from Ghostbusters mm-hmm. to Kindergarten Cop. I bet he did yeah. others throughout there. But Ghostbusters 2. And yeah, then this. Ghost, yeah, then this. Mm-hmm. Domestic, $91 million. International, $110 million. Worldwide total of $201 million. On a budget of $15 million. Opening kind of rough. $7 million, but it was 90. Well, who cares? It ended up making 90 in the yeah, U.S. It made a lot of money. Yeah. So that means a lot of people told other people, hey, go watch Kindergarten Cop. It's a lot of fun. And then it had legs. Uh, look, 200 and... One million in 1990 money. We remember we used to do this. It's probably about 450 million now. So this was like this was like a really yeah. pretty big hit. Um, and you said the budget was 15, 15 million dollars. <laughs> it's not that's nothing. It made back like eight, nine times its budget. Um, all right, very <laughs> yeah. good. Well, how did the critics feel about this movie and the audiences? Now, audiences clearly paid to watch it. But do they like it? I don't know. So this is this is interesting. Last movie, if you listen to the last show, yeah, Underworld, where there's a huge gap. This tiny gap, they're almost the same number. Critic score is only a 51%. Audience score is a 52%. So they're only 1% apart. One of those instances where everyone seems to view this movie the same way, and that is that half the people like it and half the people don't literally 51 50 percent we'll just call it 50 percent. so interesting split right down the middle apparently yeah i mean that's to me that's kind of weird right because like if you look at it it's called classic if you look yeah. at anyone that says arnold schwarzenegger movies this would be at least and i guarantee you would be top five for anyone's list especially if you like his like comedic more comedic stuff because arnold yeah. has that mix you know one thing that a lot of action people like van damme does not have comedic mix movies uh, uh what's this guy's name Sugal. they're just they, you know you got jingle all the way this twins you know arnold went outside of his box a little bit so okay well we're gonna go outside of our box because we're gonna be reviewing this movie now forget the 50 percent, alex i have no idea what you think of this you really have no we never talk about this movie So neither of us knows how the other one feels about it. So we're going to start with our lead character, John Kimball. I always remember his name 
for some reason, I like one thing I do remember is that his guy's named John Kimball. And yeah. I don't know if it's because of that little tiny principal, the, I, I like the way she says his name, but Linda John Kimball. Okay, Hurt. what do you think? Yeah, she's hilarious. Yeah. Her, uh, she does hunt. a little punch. Yeah, yeah she's she great. <laughs> okay, so Richard, I always call him Richard Kimball. Uh, no. John Kimball, he's good. <laughs> now, let's get to the character. Yes. He's a detective, right? Mm -hmm. Typical Arnold Schwarzenegger, right? He's a, he's a cop. 90s. So again, Arnold is not like one of those that are like a, a actor actor, right? He is there for the An muscle. Star. Yeah, he's yes. a, he's a muscle dude. So, mm -hmm. for me when you put a muscle guy in a Disney type movie, <laughs> it's like, you know what? Can this be a diamond in the rough? You know what? They hit a, out of the park with this one. <laughs> Because you know what? It fit so well with the kids, yeah. Arnold. And it started off for those action junkies that are Arnold Schwarzenegger fans. This movie was basically started it off with that, mm -hmm. right? You go, oh, my God, he's a detective. And you're like, okay, that's cool. He's after the bad guy. Then all of a sudden, his partner gets sick. He becomes straight to like school of rock, right? Like you're like, oh yes. my god, here we go. Mm -hmm. I loved it, dude. I think he was cool. I think he was very funny in this movie. I I actually love the character. I gave him a five. There was like no flaw in this character. I think yep. it was like written very well, and they picked a good actor for this movie. I think isn't Richard Kimball fugitive? Is that why you want to? That's keep why Richard, Richard Kimball is, is a fugitive. He's a fugitive. Yeah, this yeah. is John Kimball, his older this brother. Um, <laughs> so, <laughs> so you know what? You know what you did right there? You took you took the nail, and then you took the hammer, and you hit it right on the head. This, this movie for action, like you said, for action fans. It starts and ends like a pure action movie, like a pure Arnold action movie. Mm -hmm. But the whole middle part is like a kid's movie. <laughs> like, it's weird. Yeah, it's really weird. And maybe I think that's why there's the mixed reception. But you know who it works for? This guy right here. Oh, yeah. I love Arnold in this movie. And he's You're right. I, I, you believe him as a gigantic cop, right, at the beginning when he arrests him. I do love that scene, even though it doesn't make any sense on Earth when he's arresting the dude at the salon and like the, the <laughs> mall security is like, hey man, you show us your, he's like, I'm a cop. And they're like, yeah, we'll see about that. I'm like, please, you no, that would never happen. The cop is going to yeah. supersede him. But anyway, it makes for a funny, it makes for a funny scene, but he's, he's absolutely jacked in this movie. This was like prime 1990. He was in amazing shape. He had the, the five o'clock, the Jason Statham shadow. Yeah. Great. Right. Then he shows up for school and that's where, I just, I love all the school stuff. I don't know. I think it's hilarious. <laughs> There's two scenes in particular that make me laugh so hard every time. Obviously the tumor line is like the most famous line where he's like, mm -hmm. it's not a tumor when he's getting mad. When the kid is like, maybe you have a tumor. The kid who's like obsessed with death. Yeah. <laughs> he's like, it's not a tumor. <laughs> but the two scenes that crack me up every, every single time when they start going crazy and he starts yelling, shut up at them. And they all start crying. But like the, the way he yells, shut up, shut up. Like he's just losing his mind. I laugh, but the funniest part, and I don't care. I, I think there's a lot of funny scenes, but it's so ra it's like a random scene. It feels like a scene that was supposed to be cut out and then they just put it back in is when the little kid is eating all the other people's lunch oh. and he picks him up. And and he's, he like, him. he's like, are these your lunches? And he's like, no. He's like, you eat other people's lunch? <laughs> <laughs> he's like so mad that this kid eats other people's lunch. And I, I literally crack. I got to like pause it and laugh because he's so mad. I'm like, why are you so mad that he's eating the lunches? But he's like, yeah. You eat other people's lunch, and then he—he's like hanging him by his shirt. Oh my god, it's hilarious! And then he drops him. Like yeah, he, he just, just puts him on the floor. Like, <laughs> it's abuse. <laughs> it is so yeah. hilarious. I I love it. And then when he has to go back in cop mode, guess what? He's he's great. Yeah, yeah. So I love this character. I agree with you. I don't really. I like the casting because it's like a fish out of water. You know, this huge. And it's a joke. Yeah, the moms are like, that's the teacher. Like all of a sudden they're all, they want to get all pretty and wear their makeup to school. And cause he's six foot four and jacked and he's a kindergarten teacher. Great. I love him. Five out of five is, yeah. is this is like an underrated Arnold character. Mm -hmm. John Kimball. He's, he's great. He doesn't get enough love. Okay. <laughs> okay. Now main villain. Oh, crisp. crisp. That's his name. Crisp. crisp. Yeah. <laughs> By Richard Tyson. Yes. Yes. Uh, two. Uh, oh, two. Yeah. <laughs> two. I mean, I could give him a yeah. one. 
I could give him a one because he's hard. You know what? I'm gonna <laughs> drop him down to a one because he's just horrible. like that. We haven't even talked about it. Dropping yeah. him down. I mean, because I, I started to think about it. he's bad. He's a bad actor. Yeah. He's not good. The villain is really bad. I think that's the weakness of this movie is the mm-hmm. villain. I think if they wrote the villain well. I think this is where the movie would have shined more. Again, don't get me wrong. I don't want people to think that this the movie is not good. The movie's great. I think the outer shell of the movie is fantastic with the kids. When yeah. it comes to the meat and potatoes of of the villain, that's where we have the problem from the mom and the son. Not yeah. good at all. It's unbelievable. This dude's like kill someone and then all of a sudden he kisses his mom in the in the courtyard you know know what to do he says in front of everybody like you know he's gonna kill the witness so he goes mom you know what to do and she goes i'll take care of it and then all it's like no his acting is bad it is so like i mean really bad acting like when he's like what do you want me to do (laughs) yeah i hate him yeah, and, and the best scene where I knew this was bad was when they were in the pharmacy, and he's mm-hmm. like, "You brought a thermometer." He's like, "You're gonna choke up my son with all this stuff like you did to me, <laughs> right?" And then she goes, <laughs> and she goes, "It made you strong or something, whatever." And then he goes, "Moms, you gotta love him." <laughs> I was like, "What?" <laughs> I was like, "That's so corny that line." Yeah, but anyway, a one. Yeah, I'm glad you lowered your number because I also gave him a one. Look. He's a trash villain. I hate the actor. I hate the way he looks. I hate the way he acts. I don't like him at all. His mom is like apparently a drug lord, like the <laughs> lord of cocaine or something in California. Like, what is this? Why? Why? And then she's like, just he's just really like her underling that he works for his mom, pretty much. The only thing he does that I think is hilarious is the scene where he's trying to buy the little toy cars for his son at the at the toy store. Oh, the, and race, then when the, the racing... Yeah, and then when the guy leaves, he just beats him up on the in the middle of the sidewalk. <laughs> nobody, like nobody's around at this crowded place. He slams his head into the door and he takes. He's like, "You should have, you should have taken the offer." Or whatever he says, I don't know. That was kind of funny. It wasn't supposed to be funny, but I thought it was funny. Uh, yeah, I hate him. I'm not gonna spend any more time on him. I think he's a crap villain, and he's not in a lot of the movie. He's in the beginning, comes out of jail. I, that whole thing doesn't make sense to me. Like. Why did they just let him out so easy? Like, oh, the the only witness died. It seems so shady. And they're just like, yeah, we'll just yeah, we'll let you out. It, it's fine. Anyway, one. I don't want to talk about it anymore. Okay, action. <laughs> this movie has no action. <laughs> <laughs> it's like Tequila Sunrise all over again. Yes, it is. And you know what? I'm going to be really... I could be generous, but I'm going to give it a two. And the reason I give it a two is the fire scene, the ending was, if you want to call it quote-unquote action, it was gunshots. Yeah. You know, Arnold did his thing with the gun. You do get the beginning where Arnold walks around with the shotgun. Yeah. When oh, he yeah, was, I like remember when he whipped it out, he goes, my car better be in two pieces or whatever the yeah. hell. And the guy's like, man, you're lucky I put my glasses down or whatever. And I was like, oh, my God. Typical yeah. eight, 90s. I thought that those scenes, I think that's pretty much it. There's not much. It's not to be honest with you. There's not much memorable action for me to even remember going. Oh, yeah, that's. That only ones that I remember is the shotgun in the beginning, the fire at the end, Richard Kimball shooting into him, and then the mom shoots, you know. John. Honestly, that's that's pretty much it. So I gave it a two. <laughs> yeah, I gave it a one. But <laughs> it's not it's not because like there's an only reason because there's none. Uh this was the tequila sunrise effect where that one had an explosion in it. This one has a school fire, but it's not an explosion. It's just like the guy just set some books on fire and then it just spreads. It oh, but like I said, it does open and close like an action film. Yeah. So it, you know, you get the beginning part with the murder in the mall, and he's like chasing them in the mall, he's going after him, and then the shotgun scene is pretty cool, whatever. But there's not really action, and then the end there is some. Like you said, with at the school and he's going to get uh, Dominic and then the bad guy's going to get his son and all that. But it's just not enough. I'll give it a one. I, I, there's no point in spending any time. What's there is fine. The, the movie's not a true action movie. It's a comedy, but it has. Well, we're going to talk about story in a second. So anyway, yes, I, I'll give it a one, but it's fine. It's it's not the point of the movie. So it's not a negative in mm-hmm. my opinion. OK, storyline. I like the story. Certain things I wasn't too crazy about, but overall, uh, you know, the partner gets sick. He had to fill in and then he became a horrible teacher in the beginning. But then he just grew <laughs> into one of the best kindergarten teachers ever. Greatest teacher of all time. Yeah, the yeah. greatest teacher of all time in like in the span of two days. Mm-hmm. I enjoyed it. I thought it was a heartfelt movie. I'm not even going to lie. I got choked up at the end when he came back and all the kids were like, Mr. Campbell. They all jumped on him. I was like, oh, eye watery. 
I was like, you know what? This is pretty good when a movie still does this to you after all these years. You get all like emotional or whatever. And I'm a sucker, I guess now, but yeah. I liked it. He said, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I gave it a four. The only reason why I didn't give it a five because the villain is god awful. And I think the scenes with the villain and the, his motives was so garbage. But I think him falling in love with, with, the, with the wife and Dominic as, yeah. as the kid, I thought that was all cool. Very believable. You know, I was like, all right, that's cool. I gave it a four. Same score. I gave it a four. I think the storyline is good. Yeah. I like the mix. I like the mix of this being a what what works for me, I think may not work for like certain people, which is why the reviews are so mixed. Because it's like, what is it's a little confused. Like, what is this? Is this a kid's movie? Because all the school stuff you could, I used to watch this when I was a kid, no big deal. But then if you really look at it, you got like drug dealers and people getting murdered. Like these are not necessarily kid movie things. You know what I mean? So it's a little bit weird. It's PG-13. So I guess that's a sign, but it's not a pure kids movie and it's not a pure adult action movie either. But I like the blend personally. So it works for me. I love the school stuff. I really like all the non-action-y parts, to be honest with you. I like Penelope Ann Miller as like the love interest, the other teacher. I like her. She's good. I like the little kid who plays Dominic. He's good. You know, kids in movies can be annoying. And I love almost all the kids in this movie. I think they're hilarious. Mm -hmm. I think the way the scene where they're all telling what their dad's job is, is one of the best scenes. (laughs) It seems like they're really just kids talking. Like it doesn't seem like they're actors, you know, it's like my, my dad doesn't do much after the accident or or whatever. Like (laughs) some of the lines are so funny. Yeah. I like all the kid actors in this. Yeah. I gave it a four. I think the storyline is good. It would have got a five it was a little more focused and you're right if the villain was better you know would have been a good character you know would have been a good actor for that role someone like james woods i think james woods would have been pretty good he's kind of like he's kind of smarmy and like at that douchey. time yeah he yeah was. especially then you know like he would have been now he's too old but then he would have been a better villain than this freaking guy that's in it now but or anyway okay <laughs> yeah meat yeah meat <laughs> meat lo- anybody, yeah. Good. <laughs> meat loves not a man. he's pretty good he would have been better than that guy yeah. All right, overall. All right, overall, I gave this a four out of a five because one, I think this movie still holds up after all these years. I think the storyline was it was still great. I was not bored at times. I just hated the damn villain. Other mm-hmm. than that, Arnold Schwarzenegger is one of the most diverse, non-great actor in the planet. <laughs> if you don't understand what I mean, like you understand, like he yes. ain't that great of an actor, but he could fit in any role because he puts his hard work into it and his charm. He has a charm to him that yes. it's it's so awesome that I love seeing him on screen. And it's it's one of those things that even whatever role he does, besides Junior, because that was garbage, I actually enjoy this movie a lot. And and I was like, you know what? This was actually a really good movie that stood the test of time right now. And I think it's still gonna there's a reason why it has a gold classic. Uh, cult following. So I give it a four. Yeah. You know what? No arguments for me, man. I've always liked this movie. I, when when they voted for it, I was excited because I'm like, yes, because then I get to rewatch it because I enjoy this film. I always have. I think it's funny. I agree with you and Arnold. I don't look at Arnold as an actor. He's like a star. You know, he's a movie star. There's a difference. There's a difference between a movie star and an actor. He's a movie star. He's got his movies make a look. Clearly, this made a ton of money. The premise is kind of stupid if you really think about it, but he has a lot of charisma. He's funny. Arnold is funny. I think he's legitimately funny. And it's because you have to put him in the right scenario to be funny. And they do it in this movie. He's serious. He's a hard man who's serious about his job. And he has to deal with a bunch of five-year-olds. Perfect. He don't know how to do it. The one he just leaves the school at that one scene in the beginning, he yells at them to shut up. They cry and he runs out of the building and it's hilarious. And he goes to get the ferret. I'm like, who's watching these kids? He just, he just left them there. So yeah, I, I love him. I like the movie. I think it's well made. I like, you know what I like about this movie? So I'm a big 90s movie. That's like my favorite decade. And this has like one of the most 90s movies scores, like the music. Yeah. It it sounds like, and they had a sound to them, like a lot of piano and stuff. This sounds like a 90s movie. It looks like a 90s movie. Absolutely love it. I also gave it a four out of a five overall. It's a great time. So what's your total points? Yeah, I mean, oh, and then before, also, if you look at Dominic's room, he had the Ghostbusters bed sheet and pillowcase. That's just for you. Yeah, that was pretty cool. <laughs> I was like, wait you. a minute, he yeah. had the Ghostbusters pillowcase. And Ivan Reitman said, hey, we're going to stick one of my other movies Yeah, we're going to put some stuff in there. Yeah. Um, my total score is a 16 out of a 25 because of the stupid villain. It would have been yeah. higher. 
Yeah, mine is a 15 out of a 25, but don't get me wrong. That's only because I had to mark low for the trash villain and the action. Otherwise, mm-hmm. I gave it a 8 out of 10 overall. Like the movie's good. It's just, it's more of a comedy mm-hmm. than an action movie, but it's a good comedy. So just do yourself a favor and watch it. So that is our first in the Arnold month. Now, coming up next week, we will be continuing going down the path of Underworld with Underworld Evolution and our next Arnold Schwarzenegger movie from the director of one of our best movies that we've watched recently, Rollerball, John McTiernan. Mm. We got a little bit of the old Last Action Hero coming up. So Last Action Hero, I'll be honest, I have only seen Last Action Hero one time in my whole life and it was a like a while ago. So I don't remember much I just remember the guy from Game of Thrones is in it and he has a weird eyeball and there's like a lot of like inside Hollywood jokes. So I am looking forward to rewatching it because it's been a minute, but that's what we got coming up next. And for everyone who's wondering, there is no Predator because that's a series and we're doing that later. Yes, that's the next one. Last Action Hero next week. Yeah, Last Action Hero. Um, I say I think I seen it recent because the 4K came out. So we we had to. Uh, I bought it. it and I didn't yeah. put it in. So I'm looking forward to it. It'll be my yeah. first time watching in 4K. Yes, yeah, so I'll watch it again. But yeah, that's <laughs> going to be pretty fun. Again, if you guys want to follow us on our social media accounts, please follow Nate over on Instagram at Netflix Reviews. Check out the podcast with him and his friends called Netflix Movie Reviews. Anything action movie guys podcast, please follow us on Instagram at Action Movie Guys Podcast or Levels of Geeks. And if you guys are watching us on YouTube, if you want to support the channel, please hit that subscribe button. If you enjoyed this video, hit that like button. And then, of course, hit those notification bells. So every time we go live, you guys will be notified or reviews drop. Again, you guys will get that alert. And, of course, if you guys want to follow us, uh, if you guys want to take us on the go, you can, guys can find us on iTunes, Spotify, Stitcher, TuneIn Radio under Action Movie Guys Podcast. No, Action Movie Guys. Sorry. <laughs> just <laughs> Action your Movie host. Guys. Yeah. yeah, just Action Movie Guys. That's your host. Nate from Netflix Reviews. I'm his co-host, Alex Figueroa. Be awesome to each other and geek out.